Walmir isn't a brand name that instantly pops in your head when thinking about mechanical keyboards. In fact, I doubt many people even know what they make. However, if you actually dive into their product lineup, you'll find a diverse field of interesting keyboards that, at least to me, looks good and has good specs for the price. One such board is the 60% WK61 that I bought on Amazon for $38 earlier this summer. You really can't expect much out of a $30 price tag. The thing is, though, WK61 is actually pretty darn good and not just good for the price point. It's just a good keyboard, period. As the name would suggest, the WK61 consists of 61 hot swappable keys. Unlike a lot of other keyboard makers, Womir doesn't offer buyers a choice of switch color as every WK61 sold has linear red switches. Instead, buyers get to select the body and keycap combinations. There are four to choose from and the one I purchased was the Glacier Blue color. The entire body is made of plastic. It does still feel well put together though. The board is firmly installed together without any creaking or noticeable creases. That's important because when you are competing in such a low budget space, unexpected quality helps elevate you up the impressions meter. For a $40 keyboard shipped out of a factory in China, I'm satisfied with what I received. While Womir ships this keyboard with linear red switches, the board is hot swappable, allowing for customization potential. If you simply want to keep it the way it is, these red switches should satisfy some mechanical keyboard lovers out there. WK61 exhibits a, a bit of a hollow touch behind its input, thus emitting like a clicky but light feeling sound. The sound coming out of this board doesn't have like an authority presence behind it like some of the other more obnoxious switch combinations. That's fine with me as that means that the WK61 is versatile enough to not only be used for personal tasks like gaming, but also in an office setting to keep you from driving your coworkers crazy. I also do like the white pudding keycaps mixed with a powder blue accent as they do mesh well together with that translucent blue casing. The surface of the caps have a frosted texture that isn't slippery and doesn't really feel like a budget sacrifice. I actually do like the feeling that these keycaps give off as I type on them. As a marketed keyboard for the gaming space, the RGB aspect is of course a centerpiece function. While it has been well documented here at the Subnautics that I'm not a big fan of these like basic rainbow RGB types, the WK61 actually won me over. It might have had something to do with that translucent casing amplifying the atmosphere created by the colors of the RGB lights, but the board does look great while all the colors are flashing around. There's the standard 19 presets with 9 color selections and 4 brightness levels to toggle between, and you can also set up macros and per key programming for effects. I have to add additional props to those putting keys for having terrific RGB letter pass through. The colors look gorgeous emitting through the letters of the keycaps here. I can sharply read each letter and the font isn't obtrusive to the layout or the design of the board. The only negative I can muster out is that I do see like a little bit of residual scuffs on the white keycaps after only about a month for the board. Still, I don't really expect much out of the RGB space on a $40 keyboard, but the RGB and keycaps are definitely one of the stronger aspects on this particular product. With only 61 keys, the WK61 sacrifices the directional keys for a compact layout. This means that users will have to rely on FN combinations that you'll have to remember in order to handle some of the operational functions. I'm terrible at coordination for things like this, and I always find it awkward to hit the FN key for anything. The directional keys as secondary functions for the I, J, K, and L also feel a bit weird for my fingers to hit. The muscle memory isn't there and never did register during my time with the WK61. 
I had an easier time with the secondary function of the backspace and the delete as my thumb did flow from the space bar, albeit a little bit unnaturally over the FN key. Other than my difficulties learning to cope with the doubled up FN functions, I found the keyboard experience on this board to be rather excellent. I was able to type comfortably and accurately in various applications of work and leisure, and I also found the board to accommodate my gaming habits pretty well too. It's a nice soft typing experience that I feel outclasses its price point. While there's no adjustable feet on the WK61, the single angle it provides is arced enough, high enough, thanks to that bulky rear, for my fingers to rest effectively on the keys. I'm okay with not having the option to change the angle as this is the actual angle I do prefer to type on. However, some people may not find it as accommodating for their wrists, so it would have been nice to have at least some sort of flexibility to alter it. Womier did include the ability to remove the USB-C cable from the board. At this price point, it's quite common to see cables attached to a board. I'm happy to see that we can not only transport this keyboard around easier, but have the ability to use our own coiled key cables. I also like that the port is smack dab in the center of the casing. It makes for a clean aesthetic look on top of a workspace. I feel like there is a lot to like here from Womier. You can easily find a gaming keyboard at this $40 price point, but you don't always find a board that looks and performs nicely. There's absolutely no mistake in this for a premium keyboard, yet I'd easily classify it as a punch above its price point. And at the end of the day, if you're able to buy a product and come out of it feeling like it was a steal of a deal, that probably means that it's a pretty good product. I feel that way about the WK61. Is it my favorite keyboard to use? Of course not. But in the larger scheme of things, if I was younger and still working at my first job in high school again, and carefully plotting how I save my resources and my money, this is a keyboard I absolutely would have loved to own. Once again, I'm Alex from the Subnautics. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you guys think of this keyboard. And if you have any other great budget keyboards you want me to check out and review for the channel, let me know in the comments below. I will see you guys in the next video. So the other day, I was on a Zoom call at work and I just dropped everything I was saying and I told them, subscribe.